It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tally here. When you read the book of Genesis about Noah's Ark, more than likely you'll come across this particular passage. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterwards when the sons of God went to the daughters of humans and had children by them, they were the heroes of old men of renown. So the question then becomes, what exactly is the backstory of the Nephilim, and what does this have to do with Gilgamesh? For comparative mythology, I'll try to answer those particular questions by using the Book of Enoch as well as the Dead Sea Scrolls. It came to pass when the children of men had multiplied that in those days, were born to beautiful and comely daughters, and the angels, the children of the heaven, saw and lust after them, and said to one another, Come, let us choose us wives from among the children of men, and beget us children. And Semuja, who was their leader, said unto them, I fear you not, indeed agree to do this deed, and I alone shall have to pay the penalty of a great sin. And they all answered him, and said, Let us all swear an oath, and I'll blend ourselves by mutual and vexation, and not to abandon this plan, but to do this thing. And there were all two hundred who descended in the days of Jared on the summit of Mount Hermed, and they call it Mount Hermed because they had sworn and bowed himself by mutual and vexation upon it. And all the others together with them took upon themselves wise, and each chose himself one, and they began to go into them, and defiled himself with them, and he taught with charms and cantation, and the cutting of roots, and made them acquaint them with plants. And they became pregnant, and bare great giants, who weigh was three thousand eldest, who consume all the accusation of men, and when men can no longer sustain them, the giants turn against them, and devour mankind. And they began to sin against birds, and beasts, and reptiles, and fish, and devours one flesh, and drink the blood. Yes, you heard it correctly. The giants are more or less born directly from women because the angels wanted to have sex with women and therefore they birthed these giants to do these awful things that were happening during those days. Now, more recently, I think back in the 1940s and 50s, many people actually discovered something that is known as the Dead Sea Scrolls. Now, the Dead Sea Scrolls has many type of manuscripts of different things that did not make it into the Bible. Some that are small segments, some are entire like chapters. But there is this one segment that is known as the Book of Giants that I found particularly really interesting, unique. They know the secrets of it was great on earth, and they killed man, they beget giants. Everything that the earth produced, the giant fish, the sky with all that grew, through the earth, and all kinds of grains, and all the trees, beasts, and reptiles, all creeping things of the earth, they observe all, every harsh deed and utterance. Male and female, and among humans. 202 donkeys, 202 rams of the flock, 202 goats, 202 beasts of the four field from every animal, from every bird. They defiled, they begot giants and monsters. They begot, and behold, all the earth was corrupt, and with his blood by the hands of giants, which did not serve fast for them, and they were seeking to devour many, the monsters attack it. Flesh, monsters, will be, they will arise, lacking in true knowledge, because the earth grew corrupt, mighty, they were considering from the angel above, and the end will perish and die. They cause great corruption in the earth, and thus does not sacrifice to, they will be. This vision is for cursing and swallow. I am the one who confess the whole group of the castaways that I shall go to. The spirits complaining about their killers and crying out, 
that they would be dying together and be an end of much I'll be sleeping and bread for my dwelling, the vision, and also enter the, the gathering of the giants. <laughs> I am a giant, and by the mighty strength of my arm and my great strength, any one mortal I may war against him, but I am not able to stand against him, for my opponents resonate in heaven, and they dwell in the holy place, and not they are stronger than I. Of the wild beasts have come, and the wild men they call me. Then Oya said to them, I have been forced to have a dream. The sleep of my eyes vanished to see a vision. Now I know that on Gilgamesh. Three of his roots while I was washing, there came. They moved the roots into this garden, all of them, and not concerned the death of our souls. All of his comrades and Oya told him what Gilgamesh said to them, and it was concerning the leader has cursed the potentialities, and the giants were glad of his words. Then he turned and left. Ha! Gilgamesh, Gilgamesh, Gilgamesh. Where have I heard that name before? Gilgamesh said unto Tanapishtim, the distant one, I gaze upon you, old man, and now do I know you. You are Utanapishtim, the distant one, whom I have journeyed so far to seek. But your appearance is in no wise different from mine. In sooth you look just like me. I was resolved to do battle against you, and overcome you, and learn your secret. Yet now does some force stay my hand. Oh, tell me, Utanapishtim, how was it that you came to stand in the assembly of gods, and attain life everlasting? And Utanapishtim did make reply unto Gilgamesh in this manner, I will discover unto you, O Gilgamesh, the whole hidden story. Unto you will I reveal the secret and the mystery. Unto you will I reveal the secret of the gods. The city of Shurupak, a place you have knowledge of, is set upon the banks of the river Euphrates. This aforementioned city is ancient, and gods once dwelled therein. But in the days of yore the multitudes teemed upon the face of the earth, and the unceasing clamor and wickedness of the people aroused the wrath of the gods. And thus the great gods purposed a mighty deluge to rain down in order to wipe out mankind. In other words, if we are interpreting the story correctly, it seems as though, based upon the information from the Book of Giants and based upon the information of the Book of Enoch, it's safe to say that the Nephilim were like a bunch of giants that were born from giant angels. And if we have the information of the Book of Giants correctly, it seems as though that one of the giants happened to be Gilgamesh directly from the Epic of Gilgamesh, which the Epic of Gilgamesh itself had a humongous flood. And so if we have to reinterpret that text about the Nephilim, it's safe to say that the God of the Bible basically drowned Gilgamesh. I think my head is just going to explode with this amount of information it pretty much goes against the childhood I was raised with. So what do you guys think about Gilgamesh being a giant? Tell me in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.